Welcome back nerds, Fino here. Little Big Tengu is upon us, and while some of you are going to jump into the gacha battlefield to recruit its villain, Taira no Kagekyo, there's plenty for the poor and abstinent alike. Most notably, we have the event's welfare servant, Kichi Hogan. She's a four-star quick assassin, and on the farming front, she demolishes every other assassin currently out. I have a full guide on her if you're interested, but the short of it is that she's well worth getting. And as of this recording, Little Big Tengu hasn't had a rerun. You get one shot at Hogan, so make it count. This whole deal is a mission event, but the structure is pretty straightforward. Do a free quest to clear missions to unlock more of the main quest, rinse and repeat. Also time gates. Once you finish a note, it should display whether it has anything relevant to one of your missions, so it's pretty easy to figure out. In the event, you'll have a large number of mini-servants that give helpful effects at the start of each battle. By and large, these are long-lasting buffs, but the catch is that your assistant for a given fight is random, so don't rely too heavily on a particular effect. But they can give you a leg up if you get lucky. Jason gives arts to your team and nerfs enemy crit chance, Benke gives NP damage and defense, Kualter gives Buster and two hits worth of evasion, Ushi gives quick and NP gain, and the combined support gives rainbow buffs up to 50% meter and stars. Doing the event also gets you Tengu's lights, which let you buff these skills. Event bonuses this time around are for bond and damage. There aren't too many farm relevant servants on the list, but aside from Hogan, some notable inclusions are Jason, Waver, and Murasaki. Now let's talk about the shop craft essence, sewing a beloved doll. It's actually pretty decent in its own right, with NP damage, buster crit, and starting charge. Not bad for a freebie. Has a full attack investment to boot. In the event, it gives a spawn rate boost to warrior enemies. Now you might be wondering what those are, and as far as I can tell, there aren't any missions specific to fighting them. But what I realized was that some nodes have warrior enemies as more of the same enemies that are already in the node. Now obviously having more enemies is good for getting more drops and mission progress, but a number of these nodes seem to have strange enemy counts if those warrior enemies don't spawn. For anyone trying to use quick or arts loopers, this is going to create problems, so your goal is to get copies of Beloved Doll as quickly as possible, using supports to fill anything under 100%. This event awards a trio of command codes. Heaven Sent Kurama Child gives crit damage, Tengu's fan purges an attack buff on hit, and also gives crit damage, while Mini Ushiwaka provides a single star while cleansing off an attack debuff. We also get a pair of strengthening quests. The first is for Benkei, giving him an AoE buff purge on his Noble Phantasm. That'd be a great thing to have on anyone that isn't Benkei, so have a K-scope or pound sand, I guess. Ushiwakamaru is a much better servant, and her upgrade is to our party attack buff, increasing its magnitude while also giving her crit damage and a star dump. Good stuff! Now if only they buffed Swims Urushi instead of Benkei. Now let's turn to the challenge quest, which you unlock after finishing all missions. It pits you against Ushi who transforms into Tyra after the first break. Say, did you like Simon Says in Dark Round Shadow? Well, it's back. Lucky for you, it's not nearly as cancerous. At the end of each turn, Ushi uses a skill that either gives herself a buff or your team a debuff. Removing these requires you to meet a specific condition. The NP charge buff needs to be removed for the Noble Phantasm, the attack debuff calls for a buster card, the crit debuff calls for a quick card, the Genji trait debuff needs an arts card, and the region effect can be removed for the debuff. The check for that last one happens at the start of Ushi's turn. The others go immediately so you can chain lesser conditions before a big Noble Phantasm to squeeze out more damage for instance. An extra incentive to meet these conditions is Ushiwakamaru's damage resistance. Every time you remove one of her buffs or debuffs, she loses a stack on that damage reduction. On first break, Tyra gets an attack buff, and on second break, you also have to deal with the three stack guts. Beyond this, it's a matter of getting Tyra's health down while fending off her noble phantasms and playing Simon Says to keep your team functional. Now she does have some nasty curveballs that are baked into her kit. Both Ushi and Tyra have evades, and this isn't a fight where you can afford to waste too much time once you get past the first bar, so consider running attackers that could bypass evasion. A far bigger problem is that Tyra's noble phantasm preemptively purges buffs, so it's pretty annoying to deal with. Buff removal resistance and taunts both work, but my solution boiled down to a face race. What I did was I took Mash to Mamu and Assassin Shiki into phase 1. Ushi's a lot more manageable than Tyra, and as long as you have a decent combo of a healer and protector, you can pretty much fend her off indefinitely. You don't have to use Tamamu or Shiki specifically, though I'll say that Castoria is a lot more useful later in the fight once you need to burn down Tyra, and running her up front just puts her at risk of getting blown up prematurely, so I'd recommend keeping her somewhere in the back if you plan to run her. Use this first phase to chip away at our protection stacks. Once you get the pop, then you have the option of either letting Tyra kill someone, or using the plug suit to swap in vanilla BB. I like running plug suit in this fight since the stun counts as a debuff for removing the healing effect. The rest of this fight is you spamming BB's Noble Phantasm, more or less. One very nice thing about running Tamamu in this fight is that she can delay Tyra's NP while having a charge generation feedback loop with BB. One final tip is that once you get Tyra down to her gut stacks, you can pop more than one per turn. Guts procs check every time your attacking character changes or a Noble Phantasm goes off, so you can remove upwards of 3 if you do something like chaining a face card into your Noble Phantasm, and then your final and extra card. Good luck.
Like if you enjoyed this video, subscribe for more, and come watch me on twitch.tv slash Tyson, where I stream every weekend, 3 p.m. Pacific time of Friday through Sunday. Tyra rolls are on the docket this time around, so keep an eye out. I'll see you there.